Welcome to this lecture on individuals. Now this is an important topic, not just for your tests and exams, but also because in real life this is a topic that affects most of us. What we're going to be studying in this section is how does individuals get taxed? What are some of the deductions that they might qualify for? So for example, if we have, this is a simple example, Miss A earns 40,000 rands per month from her employer. She incurs the following costs. Taxi fees. lunch let's maybe say home office expenses at the end of this lecture you need to be able to tell me and also let's just say retirement benefits yeah at the end of this lecture you need to be able to tell me can she claim deductions for these things for example this 40,000 rands that she gets here per month, does it make a difference if she earns a salary or if she earns a commission? Will that affect us? And you'll see the answer is yes, it will does. So I want you to be able to just think about it practically. Think about yourself, your friends, maybe your family, people who earn salaries or commission, the type of cost that they have, the type of income that they earn. Do you know how to tax them? Right, and this section of the work will tell us how to do so. So let's talk about a tax framework. When you are answering questions, it's important for you to answer it in terms of the tax framework. Now what I mean by that is you'll see that there's a certain order here which you need to follow and please note that if you don't follow this order you might even be marked negatively. So it's very important. Some of the sections in the Act also specifically tell you to follow it in this way and they rely on subtotals and so forth. So what I want you to see is, we start over here at the top. We always start off our gross income, less our exempt income. That gives us income, less um, our deductions. And I'm saying excluding section 11F. Now what I want you to understand here, I'm not saying you have to create a whole heading of gross income, a whole heading of, of exempt income and a whole heading of deductions. In reality, it might work like that. But what I want you to do is if there are one, two, three transactions that they give you in a question, I want you to, for each of them, think about what is the gross income implication and do it. What's the exempt income implication and do it. What is the deductions implication and do it. So number one might be that they tell you that you earn a salary, um, so you'll only have gross income. Number two might say that you've got a, a uniform allowance right and you'll remember uniform allowances there's a gross income element and then an exempt income element and number three might be that they tell you um, this person has a rental property and this rental property earns an income so monthly rental and there's also some expenses so then when you get to number three you'll talk about the gross income and then you'll do the deductions so when you're answering your question, you'll have one, and you'll say salary, two, uniform allowance, you have the income, then the exemption. Number three, you have the rental income, then the deduction. So I want you to see num this salary, uniform allowance, and rental are all gross income amounts, basically, what we see over there. But I didn't put them all under one heading. So I'm saying for each transaction as you go, do it in that order. But as you'll see as we go along, there are a couple of things that we need to do at the right place. So allowances. Now I'm not talking about uniform allowances or allowances which are completely exempt. They're a little bit different, but you'll see this when we, uh, in the relevant parts of in the future when we're looking at fringe benefits and so forth. But allowances, we all treat what we all do at this point. So we do allowances before we do add our taxable capital gain. Please note we are included. 
Now, this is especially important for travel allowance and subsistence allowance. Um, those big allowances which might count a lot of marks. In reality, um, you'll sometimes see solutions where they include the travel allowance here at the top somewhere. Guys, that is, um, obviously sometimes they're a little bit more lenient in solutions, but please follow this approach of including it right before taxable capital gains. Then what I want you to see is, you have the taxable capital gain, then you must do Section 11F, and last, Section 18A, other nations deduction. The order over here is extremely important. So you'll do all of your other transactions, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all of these first, then you'll do CGT, then Section 11F, then Section 18A. Okay, you'll also see, before each of these, so before I do my taxable capital gain, there's a subtotal. There's a subtotal. There's a subtotal. And I recommend that you do the same thing. And as we go on, you'll also understand why that is important.